Hello everyone, thanks for listening to this talk. I'm Xingzhe from University of Pittsburgh, and it's my pleasure to share you with our work, Sparrowsonic Monitoring Human Lung Function via Acoustic Sensing on Commodity Smartphones. This is a collaborative work with my lab mates Bo Yuan, Rui Rong, my advisor Dr. Wei Gao, and clinicians Ge Yang, Eric Furno, and Wei Chen at the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, which is affiliated to University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Respiratory diseases have been a significant public health challenge nowadays. Data from CDC shows that a large amount of people in the U.S. are currently suffering from asthma and COPD. Moreover, in the past months, COVID-19 has been the most difficult healthcare challenge to the world. So far, it has caused more than 20 million cases around the world, and that number is still quickly growing. All these diseases result in degradation of human lung function, and clinical lung function test is a main method to evaluate these diseases. The most commonly used lung function test is a spirometry. In each spirometry test, as you may see, the patient stays still and maintain an upright posture to ensure clear lung airway. Then, the patient is asked to breath through a mouthpiece. In the inhaling stage, he should inhale as deeply as possible. And then, in the exhaling stage, he should exhale hard to quickly expel as much air as he can from the lung. This protocol needs to be strictly followed to ensure the accuracy. The exhaled airflow goes through a specialized device called spirometer. The spirometer measures the velocity and the volume of this airflow and it quantifies the lung function based on these measurements. These spirometry measurements could be represented as flow volume graph, which shows a correlation between the volume and the velocity of the airflow. From this graph, several numbers in the lung function indices can be derived to represent the patient's lung function. In particular, these indices are derived mainly from the exhaling stage, and they include the maximum of the outgoing air velocity, the outgoing air volume in the first second of exhalation, and the entire volume of the outgoing air. At last, the ratio of FEV1 and FVC is usually used as the overall reference of lung function. This ratio should be higher than 80% among healthy humans, but could be as low as 50 to 60% among asthma patients. Due to the correlation between lung function and body characteristics, such as height and gender, in clinical practice, these indices are always converted into percentiles for better representation. Ideally, spirometry needs to be conducted daily by patients themselves at home to better track the disease progression. A three-year study on certain respiratory disease shows the progression difference between monthly spirometry and daily spirometry. As you can see, frequent spirometry can greatly improve the survival rate as it detects abnormal change of lung function so that patients can seek for timely medication. However, those current spirometers being used in clinic are too bulky for daily in-home use. Portable clinical grade spirometers, on the other hand, are too expensive. There are some low-cost mobile spirometers on market, but their errors could be as high as 20%. Besides, Researchers are further adopting different sensing modalities to monitor humans' breaths in different ways. Some prior work used wearable sensors or camera to track the human breath, but they either require contact to human bodies or incur high hardware cost. Instead, people use RF or acoustic signal to track the chest motion of human breath, and these systems can accurately estimate the breath rate and monitor abnormal breath events such as apnea. However, they are incapable of explicitly measuring the human's lung function indices. Some other researchers measure lung function from a commodity smartphone by analyzing the audible sound produced in spirometry tests. But their performance of these systems will be largely degraded when there exists environmental noise. Such noise, unfortunately, will be commonly expected in regular home settings. 
To address all these limitations, we propose Spirosonic that enables accurate, adaptive, and reliable in-home spirometry with community smartphones. When a patient is doing a spirometry test, Spirosonic mimics an active sonar system that tracks a chest wall motion using ultrasound signal transmitted and received by the smartphone. From this motion, Spirosonic extracts specific features that correlate to lung function indices. Then it estimates these indices using neural network regression. From this design, Spirosonic is 100% contactless and very easy to use. It is highly accurate and can adapt to different human factors and the dynamics that may happen in home use settings. Its functionality has been clinically validated through an extensive clinical study. The motivation of our design is a correlation between chest wall motion and the lung function. As you may see, when the human exhales, the lung size shrinks. This change in lung size will lead to a displacement on the chest wall, which can be externally observed. This correlation is also clinically validated by existing studies. To track such chest wall motion, Spirosonic computes the phase change when the transmitted ultrasound signal reflects from the chest wall and then received by the microphone. At different times, the chest wall moves and the re results in different reflected signals. The phase change is then directly related to the chest wall displacement, which can be calculated as here. As a result, during any time period in a spirometry test, the chest wall motion can always be derived from the corresponding signal phase change. To estimate lung function indices, we extract motion features from the chest wall motion during the exhalation stage. First, PEF, that is the max velocity of outgoing air, corresponds to the max beat of chest wall motion. Next, we represent FEV1 using the chest wall displacement in the first second of exhalation. Then, the entire chest wall displacement corresponds to FVC. These features are fed into a neural network and the network performs regression to convert these features into real lung function indices. However, the major technical challenge for Spirosonic in practice is the existence of heterogeneous human factors and dynamics, especially when the patient uses Spirosonic by themselves in regular home settings. First, to allow spirometry tests anywhere and anytime in home settings, Spirosonic always assumes that the patient hand holds a smartphone. However, the motion of the holding hand could be incorrectly mixed with the measured chest wall motion and has to be removed. Similarly, when the patient exhales hard during a spirometry test, his body may unconsciously lean forward or backward, and such body motion may similarly be counted as a chest wall motion. Finally, uh, for in-home use of Spirosonic, the patient may not strictly follow the spirometry protocol due to lack of clinical guidance. Uh, the corresponding poor efforts in spirometry tests may degrade the quality of acquired data and produce extra errors. All these factors contribute to inaccurate measurement of chest wall motion that leads to error when estimating lung function indices. First, we investigated the impact of hand motion and found that it affects the calculation of signal phase change. To illustrate this, we represent the received ultrasound signal on complex plane as the acutrice, and the phase change can then be calculated as phi t1 minus phi t0. When the tracking device is stationary, the acutrice is a summation of chest reflection and surrounding reflections and this trace is usually a regular collection of concentric arcs. When the chest wall moves, the surrounding reflections will never change, so that the signal phase change is only caused by the chest reflection itself. We can figure out the phase change under the fixed arc center. If the tracking device is handheld due to the hand motion, the surrounding reflection will also continuously change this results in distorted accurate trace, and the phase change cannot be correctly calculated 
because of the continuous change of arc center and the radius. To correct such distortion, we first segment the accuracies based on the amount of phase change. Afterwards, we separately correct the distortion on each segment by approximating this segment to the closest regular arc. After each signal sample is corrected to its counterpart on the regular arc, we can obtain the phi as a phase change of this segment. For body motion, we divide it into two categories as unidirectional and bidirectional motions. Since unidirectional motion only happens along one direction, either forward or backward, it can be calibrated based on the fact that if there is no body motion, the chest wall should be at the same position before and after a spirometry test, assuming that the patient fully inhales and exhales in the test. With such rationale, Sparrowsonic proportionally calibrates every signal sample on the exhalation stage. However, in practice, the human body may move both forward and backward in a test. To remove such bidirectional motion, Sparrowsonic implements adaptive smoothing based on chest wall motion speed. The smoothing can ensure that when the chest is steady, it enlarges the smoothing window to eliminate most variation to make the curve smooth. Mm -hmm. When the chest moves fast, it applies small window size to keep most details. The effectiveness of adaptive smoothing is evaluated by defining the peak-to-peak -peak ratio A and B. We can eliminate small bidirectional motions with ratios smaller than 0.35. Otherwise, it usually implies that the patient did not follow the spirometry protocol. Spirosonic will exclude those trials because they cannot provide reliable measurements of lung function. Essentially, it is quite common that patients are unable to follow the protocol when they do spirometry by themselves at home without any clinical guidance. In this case, Spirosonic could correctly identify all spirometry data with low quality and exclude this data from lung function estimation. As you can see here, a spirometry of high quality should produce the chest wall motion as a V-shape so that we can easily identify the exhalation stage and extract motion features. Spir spirometry tests being done with poor efforts, on the other hand, does not contain such a clear exhalation stage. Spirosonic decides the quality of spirometry data by seeing whether we can identify a valid exhalation stage. Simply speaking, we identify an exhalation stage between a local minimum of the chest displacement and a plateau with little chest motion that possibly indicates the end of spirometry test. But in practice, as you may see, there could be multiple possible choices and we define several criteria to select the best choice. Due to the time limit, I will not describe this criteria here, but you can refer to our paper for more details. If we cannot find any valid exhalation stage, then the spirometry test will be excluded from the lung function estimation. We implemented Spirosonic as a smartphone app and use a multi-tone ultrasound signal for better frequency responses. Signals from different frequencies are individually analyzed and the results are then averaged together. To facilitate the clinical study, this app is fully automated and customizable, which means the patient doesn't need to indicate the start and the end of the exhalation and is able to pause the measurement at any time. We first evaluated Sparrowsonic over five student volunteers in our lab office each volunteer uses both Sparrowsonic and a clinical grade spirometer at the same time. Then we compare their results. For each volunteer, we test the error of Sparrowsonic using the other force data as training. All results listed here are averaged over all the five volunteers. We first determine the neural network parameter by comparing the trade-off between regression error and inference costs. Complex network with more neurons will lead to smaller error but a larger inference time. Finally, we chose a three-layer network including 12, 10, 8 neurons. Under such setup, 
we evaluate the error produced by spiral sonic and the effectiveness of our techniques addressing human factors. As you can see, after eliminating the multiple human factors, the error of estimating long function indices greatly reduced by more than 5%, and the error is constrained below 3%. After that, we conducted more experiments to investigate spiral sonics accuracy with different measurement distances, smartphone orientation, smartphone model, and the surrounding environments. Under all setups, the error is kept at 4%. Further, Sparrowsonic only consumes less than 15% battery after one hour continuous use. In practice, each spirometry lasts less than 30 seconds, so the power consumption is negligible. Another important factor is the cloth being worn during spirometry tests, because cloths will create extra signal reflections. To evaluate such impact, we chose clothes with different thickness tightness, and texture. Because the acoustic signal of low frequency has a good penetration property, only very thick feather leads to large regression error. Furthermore, we collaborated with Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh and conducted a four-month clinical study. We recruited 83 pediatric patients with different body and health conditions. The clinical study is conducted under similar setup by using a clinical spirometer to collect uh, the ground truth of lung function indices. The measurement accuracy over these patients is shown here. Spirosonic can achieve less than 10% error on the ratio of FEV1 and FVC, which is believed to be the most clinical useful to evaluate lung function. If we average the results over multiple spirometry trials, the error is further reduced. We also investigated the error of spirosonic over individual patients. As you can see, spirosonic could retain even better accuracy over most patients, and the overall accuracy is mainly affected by the three outliers that fail to follow the spirometry protocol. If we exclude these three outliers, spirosonic can achieve an error within 5 to 10 percent. This number is comparable to clinical grade spirometers. We also investigate the performance of spirosonic on different subgroups of patients. Due to the difference of concentration, body, and disease characteristics, spirosonic may have different level of errors on these subgroups. For example, younger kids are less collaborative in the clinical room, resulting in more errors. And the possible reason for the difference between boys and girls could be that Girls usually have wider but shorter airways in their childhood, so that their lung function indices could have less variation. We are currently collaborating with the pulmonary doctors to do more clinical investigations for such difference among patient subgroups. Based on the above results, we conclude that spirosonic can be used as an accurate and reliable tool to monitor lung function on a daily basis in regular home settings. Besides, there are still open problems that we will keep working on. First, spirosonic tracks chest wall motion by assuming regular size and shape of human chest. However, if the patient has certain chest deformity caused by serious respiratory diseases, the accuracy of spirosonic could drop. This will be the focus of our next step of improvement. Second, you may notice that spirosonic has performance differences between healthy human and patients with respiratory diseases. We consider such difference is mainly caused by the subject difference between lab evaluation and clinical study. Since our patients in the clinical studies are children, they might be less collaborative during the test. So next step, we plan to conduct study incorporating people with larger diversity. Finally, given the potential of spirosonic, we are integrating spirosonic with existing clinical tools like X-ray and CT imaging. For example, such imaging results of a specific patient could be used as a baseline to customize spirosonic's chest wall motion tracking as well as a neural network regression in order to further enhance the accuracy of our individual patients. This will also be our future work. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this talk.